Hey what is up guys, I'm Gunnix here and welcome back to a brand new tutorial here on the channel. So this is a Godot tutorial and in today's tutorial I'm going to be teaching you all how to make an automatic opening and closing door. So if you do enjoy be sure to like, comment and subscribe for more and without further ado let's get right into it. So as you can see here I've got a basic scene set up with a basic player and then I've got two walls here and in between these two walls is where our auto door will be. So I will show you guys what this scene does look like for now. So as you can see, I've just got my player here and I've got a camera in the scene as well to view the player. And then right now we've just got these two walls and in between these two walls will soon to be an auto door for us to walk through and then have open and close. So here's what we're gonna do. So we're gonna start off by creating a new scene and it will be a 3D scene. And I'm going to rename this node here to auto door. And then what I'm going to do is I'm now going to create a child node. And it will be a static body 3D. And then what we're going to do is we're going to then create another child node of this static body 3D. So make sure you have your static body 3D selected. And then right click on it to add a child node. And then go collision shape 3D. And basically what we're doing here is we're now adding shape to our static body 3D. Because the reason as to why we're adding a static body 3D to our auto door is because our door needs to have collision of course. So yeah. And so with our collision shape 3D, I do recommend doing a box shape. Since you know doors are more boxy in shape, they're like rectangles you know. So it makes sense to do a, a box shape for your collision shape. And then uh, select your static body 3D again, right click, add child node. And this time we'll be adding a mesh instance 3D. And the reason as to why we're adding a mesh instance now is because we want to make sure that our player can see the door since we want it to have, you know, some visual. So that's what the mesh instance 3D provides. So what I've done is I've just set the cube uh, as my mesh instance. So yeah. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to select my static body 3D. Um, and in the inspector tab here, um, if you go down to transform, you can change the scale of stuff if you want to. So I'm going to make this more scaled like a door now. So I'm just going to turn down the uh, the Z axis to something like 0 0.5 to make the door a bit thinner. We'll make it about 3.5 in height and then maybe 2.5 in uh, in length maybe. Or um, you know 2.3 or maybe even just 2. Yeah we'll do 2 for now. So that there is going to be my door shape. So now that is pretty much all ready. Um, we are going to, of course, um, do one more thing and that is add an area 3D. And the area 3D, what that does is it basically is like a trigger. It's basically those form of triggers. And then we do need to make sure that our area 3D has a shape. So we're gonna go right click again, go add child node and then collision shape 3D. And we're going to be doing a box shape for this. You guys can do whatever collision shape you want to, but I'm going to be doing a box shape for my collision, for my trigger. And then what I'm going to do is I'm now going to then scale out the uh, area 3D. You can scale out however, uh, whatever distance you want to, but um, uh, basically the size of this area 3D will determine when your door will open and close. So when your player or a, a character body 3D in general enters this trigger, uh, the door will open. When they exit, it will close. So yeah. And also be sure to press Control S to save your scenes as well. So in case if your PC crashes or your project crashes, then you won't have any issues. So um, I do recommend you create a scenes folder in your project if you haven't already, and then just go save and boom. All right, so the basic setup of our door and its nodes is basically complete for now. So what we're going to be doing now is we're actually going to be uh, selecting our auto doors parent object. So just your parent node of the scene. And then we're going to now be creating a new script. So in the inspector menu where it says script empty, go new script. And you can call this script whatever you want. I'm just going to call it auto door and I'm going to save it into my scripts folder. If you don't already have a scripts folder, of course, you can just create one by clicking on this uh, folder icon here. And then you can just create folder and boom, you guys get it. And then when your path for your script is all set up, just go create script and boom. So we're going to start off here by getting rid of the ready function. And we're actually going to be entering in a few variables. So we're going to be entering in a variable called toggle. And this will determine if our door is opened or closed. 
And for now, we're going to be just having this equal to false, meaning our door will start closed. And then we're also going to create another variable here called bodies underscore entered. And we'll make this equal to zero for now. And basically what that will determine is how many bodies are currently in our doors area 3D trigger. So what we're going to be doing here is we're going to be uh, creating two new functions. So this function will be called enter trigger. And in parentheses you're going to be writing body. And what body will be is this will be the body that enters the trigger. And then you want to do the two dots. And then go if body is character body 3D. So we're checking if the type of our body is a character body 3D. And then if it is, uh, bodies underscore entered will plus equal 1. So basically what that means is that we're getting the value of bodies entered and we're plussing onto it. So if bodies entered equals to 2 for example, when we do plus equals 1, that means that bodies entered will then equal to 3. And then we're going to actually uh, copy this whole function here. We're going to paste it underneath. And we're going to uh, replace enter with exit trigger. And then we're going to do bodies entered minus equals 1. So basically if the body exits the trigger and it is a character body 3D, then bodies entered will minus by 1. And also another thing that we're going to do here as well is we will uh, make sure that uh, if the body has entered and it is a character body 3D, what we'll also be doing here is we'll be doing um, if not toggle, then toggle equals to true. So basically what we're doing here is um, when, a, when a body enters the trigger, if toggle hasn't already equaled to true, then toggle will equal to true. And then down here, what we'll be doing in our exit trigger function, we'll be going if, and this is, make sure you do this underneath your bodies entered minus equals one line, it's important that you do. Uh, go if bodies underscore entered equals to zero, what you then want to do is you want to make sure that um, if toggle, then toggle equals to false. So what we're checking for here is um, if uh, a body exits the trigger and there are no more bodies within the area 3D trigger, if toggle equals to true, toggle will then equal to false. Alrighty, so now what we're going to do is we're going to now do the opening and closing of our door. So we're going to do that functionality now. So we're going to create two new variables here. And we're going to call these open clamp. And I'm going to have this just equal to zero for now. And then we're going to do close camp, close clamp. So what the open and close clamp are is these will be like the maximum values in which our doors can, in which our doors position can open and close to. So here's what we're going to be doing here. So in our process function, if toggle, so that means, oh wait, no, I forgot to write if. So if toggle, and what that will do is um, that means if toggle equals to true. So what we're going to do is um, with your auto door, right, what, what I recommend is um, because of how we're going to be changing the position of it in this video, I do recommend that your door is facing, um, so see how I've got my uh, XYZ axis here, make sure your door is facing this way. Okay, so in case you didn't know, uh, the blue arrow, wherever that's pointing, that means that is backwards, uh, forwards is this way. So yeah, that is forwards, that is how Godot works, um, so yeah. That is how Godot's forwards and backwards work. So I do recommend that you have your door facing like this, like how I've got my XYZ axis here. So yeah. So if your static body 3D is facing um, in the X axis direction, I do recommend that you turn it around so it's in the Z axis. So yeah. So with our static body 3D here, this is uh, the thing we'll be changing for the position of our door. So let's say for example, um, we want our door to like open out a bit, right? Um, what I might actually clamp my open value to is something like 1.5. So I'm just going to move that back to the zero axis now. So I do recommend that with your static body 3D, you drag it along the X axis and you basically test out how far you want it to open. And then whatever value you like, um, use that for the open clamp. So with me, I like 1.5. So with my open clamp, I'm going to set this to 1.5. And then with my close clamp, 
since the static body 3D, um, when it's closed, when the door's closed, it's just, you know, zeroed out on the X, Y, Z axis. I'm just going to have the close clamp, you know, just set to zero. So yeah. So if toggle equals to true, which means if the door is uh, opening, so what we want to do is we're going to go if and then dollar sign static body 3D. So what dollar sign does is basically that allows us to get like the child node of the node of which this script is attached to. And because this script is attached to the parent node of the static body 3D, that means that we can do dollar sign static body 3D. So we can just get it like that. And then what we're going to do is we're going to go if static body 3D dot position dot x is less than equal to the open clamp. So not less than equal to, sorry, just less than the open clamp. So if the static body 3D's uh, X position is less than the open clamp, and what we'll be doing is we'll be doing, uh, we'll just copy this line of code here for the, for the static body's uh, X position. And then we're going to do plus equals. And then you guys can do whatever you want to here. This will basically, we will basically create a variable here called, um, uh, open close speed so this will be our doors open close speed you guys can set this to whatever you want so i'm just going to set it to two for now and we're going to do plus equals open close speed and there we go so then what we're going to do is we're now going to copy this part here and then we're just going to paste it underneath oh accidentally um indented it wrong there there we go so now we're going to be changing this from if toggle to if not toggle and instead of um, if static body 3D dot position dot X uh, less than clo open clamp, what we're going to be doing is if it's more than the close clamp, what we're going to be doing is we're now going to be minusing the static body 3D's position. And then boom, that should be all good. So that there should be our script all pretty much done. If there's anything else that I need to add or change that I've forgotten, then I will, of course. But yeah, so we're going to be going back to our uh, 3D scene now. So with your area 3D, select your area 3D, and then in the ins where, it, where you have your inspector tab, switch to node, switch to the node tab here. And then where you have your area 3D signals, you want to double click on body entered. Just double click on that. And then you want to type in for your receiver method here, and also make sure that you do have your uh, auto door parent object selected, since that's what we've got our uh, script attached to. And with the receiver method, just type in your uh, doors open uh, your doors open function. So for me, I'll just cancel that for now, just so I can check. So for me, it is enter trigger. So I'm just going to write enter trigger here for the receiver method, since that is my doors open function name. And then boom, uh, you'll know if it worked when you actually get like a green arrow and square. Uh, basically, you know, you have like a green arrow pointing into a square. That basically means that now the signal is actually connected up to this function. And then you want to do the same thing with your exit trigger function as well. So if your area 3D, where you have body exited, double click on this. And then you want to type in your uh, closed door name, your closed door function name, I mean. So for me, it's exit trigger. And boom, now it is all connected up. So that should all be should all be good now. I think that should all work out. If there's anything that I need to change or fix up uh, after testing it out, of course I will. But that should all be good for now. So what I'm going to do now is I'm actually going to set like a basic material on this mesh, so then we can tell it apart from the basic white walls in our uh, in our main scene where we're going to be testing this out. So with our so with the mesh instance 3D, um, I'm just going to go down into the geometry tab where it says material override empty new stand material 3D, and then I'm going to change the albedo color to something like green. There we go, and boom. So now I'm going to go into my auto door tutorial scene, and now I'm going to add my door in, and fingers crossed that everything works out. And here we go. All right, hopefully. This is all going to work out as intended. Um, what am I actually going to do? I'm going to go back into my auto door scene. I'm going to scale out my door just a bit more on the X axis. Oh, damn it. I accidentally just reset it there. Um, that's probably all right. Yeah, I think um, 2.2 will be all right there. All right, guys. So I just did a little test before and something that I noticed is that the open, the um, the position of the opening and closing was a tiny bit off, and I've got a way to fix that. So basically, what we're going to do is we're going to just copy this line here, then we're going to paste it underneath here, 
and then instead of less than, we're going to be then replacing the less than with open, I mean with over. So if the static body 3D's position, uh, the X position is over the open clamp, what will happen is, well, the static body 3D's position will just equal to the open clamp. And then we're going to be copying this here and then just pasting it down here in the, uh, in the if toggle is false section. And then what we're going to be doing here is instead of over open clamp, we're going to be doing less than close clamp. So basically the opposite of what we've got going on here of, of um, if over close clamp. So if it's less than the close clamp, what will happen is the position, the X position will just equal to close clamp. And then boom, uh, basically the position of the door should be now more accurate. Alrighty, so here we are in our scene. So if I walk into the trigger, boom, the door opens. And then it closes. Opens and closes. So as you can see, the door is just continuously opening and closing. And that is pretty cool. So another thing that I want to mention as well is um, earlier on in the video when I was setting the open close speed, I think I had it to something like 2. But um, I think that is a bit too much when it comes to that. So I do recommend that you set it to something like 0 0.2 or maybe even a bit slower if you want to as well. Something else which I'm going to do is I'm going to change the open clamp of my door to 2. And um, now let's test it out again. And boom, that is actually a bunch better now. So yeah, that actually works a lot better. Hey guys, so Omegonix from the future here. So there's something that I actually forgot to do for the coding of the auto door. So where we have the X position being plus right by the open close speed, what you need to do after the open close speed uh, is you need to do times and then by delta. And what this does is this makes sure that the uh, position of our door when it is being plussed onto it's not frame rate dependent it is now time dependent so depending on your frame rate right without the uh, times delta what that will do is basically depending on what your frame rate is that will determine of that will determine the speed in which the door opens and closes and obviously we don't want that so that's why we do times delta to make sure that uh, things are actually time dependent instead of frame rate dependent so yeah and then uh, when it comes to my open close speed i actually i actually set this to 0 0.1 because of how fast it was at two earlier but if i set this to one again and then i test out my scene boom it actually does open uh slower now so yeah so do make sure that you do add in uh times by delta that's something which i forgot to mention so yeah, overall guys, um, if you did enjoy this video, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe for more. Hopefully this tutorial helped you out a lot. And uh, yeah, so hopefully this door is useful for if you have multiple character body 3Ds um, in your scene as well. That's why I added in the uh, bodies entered variable. So then you can actually check if you've got uh, you know, other bodies enter entering and exiting and stuff like that to see if there's actually any standing within the trigger to uh, allow the door to keep open. So yeah. Anyways guys, that's the end of this tutorial. Hopefully it helped you all out. I'll be sure to see you all next time, and bye bye